of the Double Platinum Podcast. How's it going, everybody? Coming to you live, large, and in charge from London, Ontario. How's it going, folks? Drew Robertson. Uh, joining me uh, remotely uh, from a little bit, uh, a little bit not from here, as you can clearly see by the video on your screen right now, using his cardboard copy stand-in that uh, is actually a live stream from his home location. Uh, Aaron Carter, how are you, sir? I'm good. How are you? I'm good, man. You know what I just thought of? I just really wanted cool? what? So you know how we just had that really weird echo effect? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Picture like oh, in the future, an effect sampler. An effect. Like you, you would sample. You would ex you would sample that weird like delay thing that we just had. Yeah. And it would replicate the effect. Like picture that. Oh, so almost like a Kemper, but for like sound effects. I mean, like you can kind of do that. Like using yeah. impulse responses, right? Like that's actually a thing you can do. Like using using like current technology. Fucking knocking talking things like over native instruments makes it really easy and pretty. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I don't know. I mean, I think that's more interesting for like a guitar perspective, right? Like, I think the, definitely the instrument group that is really leveraging digital shit is guitars. Oh, definitely. Like, you think about stuff like the Kemper and stuff, right? Oh, yeah. Like, that thing is, is, is magic. It's black magic. I'm not sure how it does what it does, but it does what it does, and it does it in a way that is both technologically incredible and, at the same time, it just it works. Uh, I know you Bias. Know uh, you know the guy, uh, Positive Grid? Yeah. I talk about them all the time. Uh, they, they make amp modeling software called uh, Bias, and they also oh, nice. have a... Uh, well, I've used them a few times, but they also have a uh, tone match thing for pedals. It's kind of like their amp match thing. So, like, the, the amp match is like profiling an amp, right? It's like impulse responses. Yeah. And uh, the idea between the pedal match, it'd be the same thing. Like, and it's only distortion pedals, unfortunately. Knock my water over on my counter here. Um, you all got to start somewhere. And, well, yeah. And, like, so it, you plug in your pedal chain or whatever with your distortion pedals. So, say you've got your hands on this really freaking awesome, I don't know, uh, boss distortion pedal. Uh, please yeah. no guitar players being at us. So say you've got this really sick distortion pedal, but it's not yours, right? Like you've borrowed it from yeah. someone. Um, you're like, fuck, I want to keep that. So in theory, you can more or less impulse response it using this software and it will model it as close as it can using its different things. Like I think that's what you're getting at for like sampling that crazy space echo we, we just had because I was an idiot and turned my speakers on facing a microphone. And um, I think that's what you're getting at, right? Like you want to be able to sample that reverb, that specific instance of reverb, yeah. and then be able to recall that whenever you want. Um, there there that are would... plugins that kind of do that now though, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's... Well, yeah, it's it's kind of kind of funny how it works. It's like there's samplers for a lot of things. And like most of the time you could just replicate it with an actual effect if you really wanted to. I'm just thinking like fucking great plugins. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Know? I know. I, I feel you. I feel you definitely. Because like what we have now is more sampling a space. You know what I mean? Like I want, yeah. I'm a clap in this room like, and it's going to record that. And then mm -hmm. it's going to um, make a reverb out of that, right? Like that's the best as we've got. Yeah. As opposed to yeah. actually being like, yo. You know that crazy, stupid feedback thing we got because we radiated and pointed a microphone at something? Let's sample that. Yeah. Right? Drew, if you could have the perfect amp tone on a Kemper from any amp company, what would that, that be? That's a tough question. I'm not, I'm not like a, a great guitar player by any stretch of the imagination, but I think one of my favorite tones has to either... So, like, I really enjoy... And these are available now, by the way. Uh, the 5150 from PV, which is sort of like a classic screaming lead tone, or like you can use it for blues, you can use it for like screaming, whatever. Like it, it's yeah. very versatile. But I, I think something Friedman. I really like Friedman yeah. uh, amps. Uh, the Harry Brown Eye, which can we just take a moment to, to realize that somebody named an amp a Harry Brown Eye um, would probably be ideal. Like they're 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 really good. They're fantastic sounding. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I think Kemper comes with those or something like that. I would say, I would say a nice martial tone. A nice martial tone. You know what? That's not wrong. I mean, he's a pioneer. And uh, in sad news, he, he passed away this week, didn't he? He did? Did he? Did he die this week? He died. Yeah. Let oh, me he did check. die. Look at that. I was not. I, hey, I read the right article. Uh, yeah, Jim Marshall died this week, and we were, Aaron and I were thinking, like, what the hell do we want to talk about this week? Because we always try and really plan a good show for you guys, and I deeply enjoyed our gaming episode last uh, episode, by the way. It was uh, a good time. Both talking about video games and actually playing a bit of a game. Um, we were like, okay, what can we what can we do? And Aaron was like, well, why don't we talk about uh, just pioneers of technology a little bit, and Jim Marshall would definitely be that. Marshall Amps. Like, I can't think of yeah. a more iconic looking amp stack than than the marshall right like if you think about it other than vok i can't think of a more like iconic uh name like fender just printed somewhere you know what i mean yeah but like fender i think of guitars more than i think of 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 amps right yeah and and taylor uh pv pv would be one but like you don't think when you think of like every concert think of every concert picture from like 1960 to like now Right, and if they're gonna have a big stack of amps behind them, chances are it's a Marshall stack, right? Just oh yeah, like that's just kind of it. I think I've seen like more JCM eight hundreds than I've seen cars. Anything else? Like, yeah, I don't <laughs> no know. Shit. Something <laughs> like you know it's just it's common. Know? Which one? Studio, and you see one. Oh yeah, no, you every studio, JCM every studio. Has them. We uh, studio two at fan. Well, studio one has an actual separate head on a on a on a four by four stack. Studio two is a little different. We've got the JCM eight hundred. Yeah. We've got a Kemper, and we have an Agnator, I think. And uh, but it's still a JCM eight hundred. Like every studio. Like if you are, are opening a studio and you need, I need amps for my studio because I'm going to be recording a lot of guitars. Chances are you're going to have a Fender Twin or a Fender Deluxe, and um, and a JCM eight hundred. Kind of covers yeah. all your bases, right? Like, that's just kind of it. Um, other than that, what else would you say is going to pop up in into into a studio? Like, Vox. Maybe Orange. Maybe Orange, if you want it. Like, I, I don't mind Orange amps, personally. I know from more than a few people that they're not their favorite tone. Uh, but probably an Orange. Mm-hmm. I really can't think of anything else. Uh, then you start getting into I'm boutique stuff, like, right? So, yeah, you get like the, you know, the hairy brown the eyes and the and the, the pink tacos like and all this. that shit, right? All the all the niche amps pink and taco, stuff. Hairy brown eye. Yeah, no, I know. Friedman names their thing like a fucking twelve year old boy. It's great. Um, but like y- you a, think about it, like you don't need anything else anymore, right? Like that's just kind of it. Yeah, like that's a, like I find, you know, it's funny how things work. Yeah. You know, everybody they're they're coming out with this new technology, new amps, new plugins, this and this and this and this. But everyone just wants the old stuff, you know what I mean? He's not Whether wrong. It's like how it's, many plugins? I'm gonna ask you a very serious question right now. How many plugins have you seen in the last year that one of their selling points, like this is the thing that they're selling you on, is that it's modeled after X analog gear? Like what is waves and UAD? Exactly. For, yeah, and, and like, and even, of. and even when it's not those, it's like, oh look, the uh, I don't know, pick a Roland. Roland has a new reverb out, a new reverb plugin. Oh yes, but it's based off this classic hardware reverb that we used to have way back in the day. Or like, you know, Leslie finally announces it's going to make a mock, make an actual Leslie cabinet mod or plugin, right? Mm-hmm. Like everything sampled off some classic analog piece of gear. Um, Which I is it's understandable. I feel like to a certain degree. I think it's holding us like, back. It's a to like an I don't know if it's like a stuck in the past thing. I mean, people like it, so I think like everything in music and and so many other things. If if it's not broke, don't fix it, right? Like that's just kind of the attitude. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. I guess and, with music too, you never know what kind of sound you're going to get out of it, right? Like yeah. that sound is going to change. You you want you know? predictability. Yeah. If you know that you you know you like that sound, you know you're going to get that that you know 
sound you want every time. You know how to mix it. You know how to do this and that to it. You know what it sounds good with. Yeah. It's, it's in a comfort zone. You know what I mean? It's, oh, everyone exactly. has you, you, you understand what's going on and it's something that's familiar. You can reach to you, right? If, if you go into a studio and you're like, okay, where's your compressors? And like, we have no compressors. Everything's digital. And it's like, everything's pro C2. Say you're everything. We only use fab filter in this studio. And you've never used FabFilter, but you know how a compressor works. You can you can work your way around, but it's got some esoteric features on it, right? Like, it's got some shit that's not normal to regular. Like, you can actually build no. in filter things, and you're like, uh, you got anything that looks like an 1176? Like, that's why we still use these units. A, they sound good, and, and B, they're familiar, right? You can go anywhere mm-hmm. in any studio, and chances are they're going to have some sort of variation of 1176, a distressor. Uh, if they've got amps, we say they got the Marshall, they've got, you know, a Fender. You know where all the tone knobs are. You can dial them in. I think you that's kind of the... Hmm. They should start making the number two of things. Like the 1176-2. I mean, oh, two. Like, yeah, the <laughs> update. This is this is the new modern version. Um, this is the 2017 one. Honestly, some companies have kind of done that. Uh, I know Warm Audio makes a lot of their own knockoff to stuff, but sometimes they put their own improvements in. So that you can get some of these upgrades and like, okay, it's a FET compressor, but we're using modern, like strict modern components. And like, well, maybe we'll add like a side, an extra side chain input or something like that. Right. The thing I was thinking is what if you brought both worlds together? Yeah. You have your 1176 number two or whatever the fuck. But since you can already emulate an 1176. Yeah. Why wouldn't you just maybe, I mean, this is like a dream, dream compressor, like an 1176-2. Yeah. And you just press in a button and it turns on the 1176-1 emulation. Okay, I see what you're getting at. So actually, I'm going to take this a step further. Instead of doing it that way, why don't we start looking at like This is golden business opportunity to any of our listeners. If you want to make the next level hardware digital compressor. So this is a compressor that's going to sample and use... 1176, an opto compressor like the LA two way or, or a Joe Meek oh, or whatever. So that you can be like, you know what? I've got one rack unit that I've got. that has got all the hookups and everything. And I can select what I want it to do. I want it to be an LA two way. And I want it to be compressing, not limiting. I want so a DVS like 402. I, whatever. It's yeah. like a Kemper. Kinda. Yeah. It's a Kemper, but for compressors, right? So like they like, should just do that with every rack unit. Like, like this is, yeah, well, this is the compressor, you know. And some companies are doing that, but a lot of other companies are taking all of their rack gear and not selling it anymore, and instead doing plug-in versions, right? Like TC Electronic just put out a brand new uh, reverb plugin that's a model of their VSS3. I'm pretty sure it's TC Electronic. Don't quote me on that, but it, it's stuff like that. Um, Lexicon, Lexicon has all of their and you know from what? the 224 to whatever, like all the different Lexicons in plug-in format. And if I can't tell the difference, then the common listener can't. Exactly. And we've said this, I don't know how many goddamn times, but the music industry, especially uh, at the production side of thing, everybody gets this kind of stickler in the mud attitude at some point or another. Everybody does. I've had it. Aaron's done it. Like it's not, you you get this thing. It's like, it's not a real X. And it's like, you get to a point where either you remain a purist and an asshole or you go, fuck it. It sounds good. And it works don't care right it's sort of thing like um a good friend of ours for bought... me that was loops. it was what oh waves yeah for me it was loops. oh loop like, yeah. Loops yeah 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 yeah. like i felt gross using them but you know it's like fuck it they're there they're there Everybody they're a tool use them like why once not? i saw was it Stu brawley or was it vic that had a cool loop whipped up he's like oh yeah i was just looking looking through Stu. i think it was vic was it vic, vic? or Stu or both oh it was vic but, like, Maybe it was Vic. I think it was Vic Currency had it up. I think it was Vic because he was talking about flicking through different sounds. And yes. Stuff, and he yeah, yeah. He's talking about the workspaces and Pro Tools. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. No, so that I was mean, definitely like, a thing that happened. If if fucking someone like Vic Vic uses it, like, exactly. I'm sorry, but like, that's, just, that's, just that's, use it. You just gave me permission. You know, and like when you stand there and it's like, get off, get off your fucking high horse, right? Like, I only make all of my sounds. No, every kick drum I use is it's not like, sampled or, or is not a loop. I go and sample it myself. Fuck off. I'm sorry. Fuck off. I ain't got well, time for that. Like, it's like, don't, you're not going to make any money on that high horse. No. You know what I mean? All you're that's doing is thing. making yourself feel better marginally, right? Like that's just kind of it. 
you're you're not doing yeah. anything other than proving to people who know to work for a living that you're an idiot or not an idiot, you're an asshole. Like that. That's just kind of my take on it. Like I the thing it, for me like, was knockoff guitars, right? Yeah. Um, I love guitars. Like I, I'm not a great guitar player, but I appreciate guitars. I like playing guitar. And some of the really cheap Chinese knockoffs are really good. Our good friend, uh, a Tyler bought one. Oh, yeah. He bought a, um, uh, a Telecaster from AliExpress for like, I think everything in it was like, it was under 300 bucks, whatever it was shipped and, and everything. And you're playing it and you're like, okay, I know that it's not a real Telecaster because like the headstock's not perfectly shaped and like little details, but God damn, is it a nice guitar? It sounds good. Plays good. The action's better on like on it than it is on my actual Fender. Like Drew, I found something that might nice be. It's a guitar. Our, I, I found something that might be our dream rack unit. Oh, what'd you find? Have you ever heard of the Axe Effects? Oh, yes, yes, yes. The Axe Effects. I'm very familiar with Axe Effects. It's uh, fractal audio, right? They're kind of like a Kemper. Right? Axe Effects 2 XL Plus. Okay. Just came out. Or is their newest really? unit? That's yeah, so I'm going to quickly send you a link to it. And while you read it, I'm going to talk to our lovely, beautiful viewers. Yeah, let me, let me pull uh, this up. About what the Axe Effects has inside of it. Will I? Because the computer is Here, having a bit of a brain fart. To... Let's see. Here. Take that dump. There you go. Cool. Let me just pull that up. The that streaming computer is uh, struggling so, at the moment, but that's okay. So it's, it's by Fractal Audio. It's got speaker simulation in it. It's okay. got preamps. It has 29 drive pedal models, 19 reverb types, oh uh, custom whammy, shimmer crystals, flanger chorus, rotary speaker, seven felt. There's it's three aggressive. compressors, front end noise gate, built in looper, vocoder, dozens of display or delays. Uh, it's custom got a customizable wah, fixed and integral harmony, phaser and univibe, panner, tremolo, tone mitch, graphic and parametric EQs, <laughs> limiter gate, mono guitar synth, fucking new new true tape echo it says, and more dot dot dot. Oh I don't my know God. what more like, they're gonna get. I, I don't know. Honestly, this is where we need need Jose. Um, we're a really good friend of the show, and one of our, our very best friends um, is a fantastic guitarist, and he's in love with the Axe Effects, and he will talk your ear off all day. Here, let me let me throw this up on the next is this video Jose? for a second. Um, yeah, Jose love yeah Jose loves this thing. He loves the Fractal Unit, and it's a really cool looking unit. Um, it's definitely obviously it's a guitar sim. But like, oh my god, yeah. they're awesome. Oh, now the just... only thing is that I don't like about the Axe Effects, and this is really the only thing I don't like, is that they don't have a power amp. Yeah. So oh, that's the wrong reset. Um, so it's it's two thousand two hundred and fifty US. Yeah. That. It's expensive. It's really expensive. Don't you love when you go on websites and like it doesn't say the price of anything until you get to the actual like okay this is where you're actually gonna buy it like it's got like three pages of like buy now buy now buy now oh yeah, yeah. by the way this is three thousand dollars yeah no I know right it, I think like taxes in is like delivery it's like thirty five hundred bucks okay come on software do what I want you to do there we go oh dear lord you. Everything's terrible That's right now, Aaron. Everything's everything's just terrible. It's going everything's beautiful. It's going great. It's just going absolutely everything, fantastic. Everything's beautiful. Yeah, no more um anyway, so yeah, no, I love the Axe Effects. It is a fantastic goddamn unit. Um like actually Swayze and I were talking about this the other day. Um the only thing with them is that like like I said, there's no power amp built in. Uh that's kind of what wins out the Kemper in my mind is that it's you can buy it with a 600 watt power amp and mm -hmm. it'll go out to whatever cab you want it to go. Whereas the Axe Effects is probably better on the studio. And if you can get a preamp to go out from it, then you're good to go. You're, you're golden. It'll make tones and, and simulation like there's no tomorrow. Um, but it's very much a digital interface, right? Like, like it relies on you because you have to use the Axe Edit, which is software, in order to do really anything. Mm -hmm. Whereas the Kemper, you can set it all up and then control everything with the knobs and dials. 
And so if you're really more into the tactile kind of experience and want everything in one neat package, then Kemper. If you want killer tone and a whole bunch of other stuff that can go beyond even what the Kemper can do, Axe Effects. Or, or you can go cheap because there's other companies out there, right? Like um, one of the better ones that I, I like personally is, uh, is the bias stuff from Positive Grid. They make a rack okay. unit. Um, but obviously it's not as powerful and not as good as, as that, but it's also only a thousand bucks. And then there's Helix, which is actually line six, which is really, really competitive for the money. It's very similar to the Axe Effects, uh, but you can't profile, but they do profiling themselves. But it takes them, I think somebody said it takes them up to like 60 days to do an amp or no, six months. If something with the six, it was either 60 days or six months. It was either like, it was a long time. Like it wasn't like they just do one a month. Yeah. It takes them a long no, time no. to do one amp because each amp is meticulously modeled circuit by circuit so that it's as accurate as possible. It's insane. That's how you do it. It's insane. Well, I guess like, I think the idea is like you do it once good enough and you don't have to do it again. You know what I it, mean? Well, exactly. Like, we, I, I think that's kind of it. That's their approach. And I agree. And I appreciate yeah. that approach. Well, yeah. Cause then you don't, you don't have a bunch of people cause you know, the other end of that is them modeling a bunch of amps doing it wrong. And then the, the customer base being like, Oh, this well, is yeah. shit. Or like this you is, get, this, um, yeah. I don't know, people doing like, oh yeah, check out my killer tone, bud. And it's like that that's all all gain. That you didn't profile this correctly, right? When the end user does it, uh, you end up with with some shitty quality stuff sometimes. Uh, cause stuff yeah. like like positive grid and Kemper and whatnot, they have the tone cloud, or I think positive grid calls there's the tone cloud, and I think the Kemper one is called Amp Share. And the whole thing of it is like, oh, you can profile your amp and upload it to the cloud and then anybody can have that amp in that room. Um, the thing that people don't get about Kemper is that it's not modeling the amp, it's impulse responsing it, which is slightly different. You're cap With the Kemper, you're capturing that guitar amplifier with that cabinet in a room with a microphone at that given time. And mm-hmm. then you can fire. So if you get a day of golden tone that you want to capture, capture it. And now that Marshall or that Fender or whatever, you can have that sound at your fingertips whenever you want and fuck with it from there. Whereas the other stuff, they've modeled it and now you can make it sound like any room anywhere. Right? It's a okay. little bit different. It's a little bit different. But it does you work. You know what you do, Drew? Mm. Double down and get both. Yeah, yeah, you could do that. Just for the fuck of it. Why not? Why not? Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, I think this is probably a good time. It's probably a good time. Well, as you say, this is probably a good time before we continue to floss for ourselves for a half a minute and remind the good folks that you can always go to patreon.com slash TDPP and uh, join our loyal army of one person and uh, throw us a buck if Absolutely. you enjoy our discussions on technology in the world because uh, we certainly do enjoy it. Absolutely. Um, we had a couple other topics to, to move on to we today. Did. And I'm going to throw this up here right now. The first one I want to talk about is the Spotify thing. So we, oh. we talk about streaming in Spotify all the goddamn time. And this is kind of an interesting thing to me. I clicked the wrong goddamn reset again. My computer slow as hell. Um, so Spotify Premium is now going to host Top, Star, or, or, top Stars albums for premium subscribers only. Thoughts. Um, you know, I said this before. Uh, like Spotify in the early days, uh, compared to like YouTube. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like when YouTube first came out, you found out about YouTube. It was like, oh, this is fucking awesome. Yeah. This is great. And then a thousand companies were like, let's make some money. <laughs> you know, pretty what much. I mean? And I feel like, you know, Spotify in, in when it first came out, it was this, you know. Fuck yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, I feel like yeah, it's you're, you get on the hype train. It's slowly gonna get to the point where it's like, is Spotify like, is this, is this as awesome as we think it is? Um, you know, that's kind of an interesting thought, and I think we're getting to that point a little bit for the average user, anyway, right? Um, yeah, I think, 
uh, at least like uh, on the one hand, you want to be angry at the business model they're proposing here, right? If you want the latest and greatest, you got to pay. But at the same time, Spotify is a money making enterprise. And if that's it's what a, every other streaming service is doing, money. what? As well as they're, they're people too. They need to make money. Well, you exactly. Know? Like they're still a company money. that's still going to make money. And ultimately, their, their platform is based on people buying into the premium subscription, right? That's, yeah. that's the whole goal. And if they're going to do that, they need to have a reason for people to want to buy a premium subscription. And if to get yeah. your favorite artists new tracks, that's the way you do it, then by all means, that's that's the way you do it. And if they're upfront about it, which they're clearly being, like they're stating that this is what they're going to do and this is the new model, then by all means, go go nuts. Go forth and make money. Yeah. See, I think it's 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 going to, it's, it's only going to target, I feel like, a certain audience. You know what I mean? Because... You know, a lot of people I know, they they don't have, you know, Katy Perry, Adele, yeah, Bruno Mars, you know, those like they don't have like all their CDs on their, you know, yeah, on their yeah, yeah they don't have every album. Um, what I think this is going to benefit from, like how they're going to benefit most, is people wanting to listen to the latest radio singles. So essentially, if you want to listen to the, all, all the most popular music at the time, you got to pay. Yeah. And uh, I think that's what I think that's kind of what they're getting at. They're trying to especially I, I, I'm happy that they're not going after the kids with their parents credit cards kind of approach, which is what a lot of places do. They're like, hey, kids, put your parents credit card in and you get all sorts of music. Right. They're, they're very much being like, no, nope, yeah. this is the new premium thing. Nothing else is changing. If you're already on premium, congratulations, you get the new thing. Um, it's sort of the thing with, with satellite radio, right? Remember when satellite radio was huge? I mean, it's still big. It's still a multi-million dollar industry, but like, oh yeah, cars aren't, it's, we're getting to a point where cars aren't coming with it standard now, all of a sudden it's like a next level upgrade premium feature. Not because they're like, yo, if you want that extra dollar, you know, you want that extra quality, you're going to have to upgrade. It's more like a look because everybody fucking streams off their phone. Right. And we're getting to a point with phones that they have enough storage and they have enough network and data that they can just stream everything off their phone to their car over Bluetooth. Right. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Um, so why bother put the extra effort and putting in a, you know, a serious satellite connection or whatever. Um, I guess it's, it's just that convenience cost. You know what I mean? Just click on the radio. Well, exactly. And like for my car, I don't have a C player in my car. So if I didn't have satellite radio and Bluetooth, I'd have no audio in my car at all. Like, I, so for me, that would be a kick in the teeth because I'm like, well, those are my two options for, for music content when I'm driving and you've, you've nuked me for both. Right. Yeah. Sometimes I find like streaming music off my phone just gets exhausting. Ooh, that was a hard Sometimes robot. I just want to put on some, put on some random <laughs> playlist. Yeah. Yeah. You just want to put the around. That's what I enjoy with my phone though, is putting on just random mode and it going. Um, that are going yeah. on satellite radio. Like that's why I like satellite radio. I love because how I get to do scary. that. That's why um, I like serious. Yeah. And I like that there's just, genres and it's not, I'm disappointed though, because it seems that they're losing some of their licensing, um, which is, I find deeply disappointing. Like I remember the eighties channel having a lot more variety. And then like for a period of a month, it was like every day between like 11 and one o'clock, it was the same rotation of songs. And I was like, okay, now this is getting like regular consumer radio. This is not why I use that serious. This is, this is not a thing. So, but yeah, that's um, the only thing I don't, I don't like listening to the radio cause I end up listening to the same music. Over the same and over. goddamn songs every goddamn time. It's like, why am I doing this? So. Oh, multiple songs in one day. Yeah. Garbage. Um, now, yeah, we no, had a little something it. else on the, on the, on the realm of streaming. Yes. So streaming, streaming versus, uh, versus vinyl. Yeah. So, so this is about Nielsen actually. So Nielsen, for those of you who don't know what Nielsen is, Nielsen is, um, how would they I get turn the this? Numbers. Yeah. They're the market analysis group. They, they do all sorts of market analysis. You guys get to look at Ed Sheeran's lovely face for a minute. Uh, so and Nielsen's music stamped. first quarter numbers, you know, massive like growth for streaming, not so much for vinyl. However, when I'm looking at that, I'm going, you expected the opposite. I mean, 
we've been blessed in the fact that vinyl's never gone anywhere, right? If there's one yeah. format of music that's never really left, it was vinyl. But here's what I find really interesting. Do you really expect to vinyl to become the king of all things audio again? Like, did anybody realistically expect that that was going to be a thing that happened? No. And my stance on vinyl is I like vinyl. It sounds nice, but I really, I like classic music on vinyl. I feel like a new record on vinyl, it just, I don't know. Doesn't and do it for we, me. We brief, you know why? We, okay, we briefly talked about this like a couple of weeks ago, but the reason is most bands don't pay for two masters. Oh, they right? vinyl. They record, yeah. they do their thing, and then they pay for mastering. And then it's one master. And then somebody gets a great idea and goes, yo, man, let's let's put this on vinyl. So they take that shitty CD master, compress it further or just turn it down and then play it on vinyl. So all the aspects of vinyl are not getting there. You're just getting this brick wall limited sausage of audio that's been turned down so it doesn't break the vinyl disc. And that's it. That's all you get on vinyl. So you get a shitty CD sound coming off of a vinyl player. That's just not fun. It's got to be mastered for vinyl. It's a different process. Uh, yeah, and I think exactly. there's a couple of albums that I've got, or I've heard rather, on vinyl that are modern albums, and they sound really good because they've been mastered for vinyl, right? It, 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 just, it just works. It just makes sense. And I think the problem that we're seeing is exactly that, is that people are going, yep, yeah, no, just put it on vinyl. Just, I don't, I don't care. I don't care. Ship it, ship it. Go on vinyl. The hipsters will buy it, just, and that's it. Oh. New album, gotta have it on vinyl. Exactly. It's a fad thing. And and that's why, like, it's never gonna grow anywhere. And the only people that buy vinyl are serious collectors, uh, super fans of a band, because they're gonna buy everything the band puts out. And the last category, the, the hipsters, right? Do insist yeah. that the only way they can listen to music is on vinyl. Uh, you know what? I really like the fact that I can store 64 gigabytes of music in my pocket at any time that I want and stream the rats. I don't need to carry around as like a vinyl like turntable. Just you know, they, should, they should just make a vinyl emulator for your phone. It's an app that plays songs with a vinyl, like, <laughs> with a, like that waves, you know, uh, like that waves Abbey road vinyl plugin that they made that you can put on your yeah. master to make it sound like it's being cut through the lacquer. There Great you idea. go. There you go. Just put some vinyl distortion on it. There you go. That's, there that's go. exactly what you need. <laughs> everyone wins. Oh, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> everyone wins when only music loses. Um, Kind of a shorter episode, but I think we're we're pretty much at question of the week territory, bud. Question of the week territory, geez. All right, all right. This week is going to be this 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 question of the week is going to be brought to you by convenience. By convenience. <laughs> all right, all right. What's what is the question of the week, sir? Yes. So, Drew, you're are you a fan of deliveries? I love Things delivery. delivery uh, in fact, I like delivery too much. Uh, the pile of cardboard in my garage would indicate that I get takeout food too often. So I agree. Yes. Yes. I do too. Um, I'm I, actually, I'm so, pretty sure the one dude at, Vi at like Domino's knows this house by name at this point in time. I would it's hope a little so. bit sad because we order from Domino's way too much. <laughs> Good. We're good customers. Um, anyway, uh, cost, uh, question of the week. Question of the week. Yes. If you could have anything delivered to your house, any delivery service, like what would you want delivered to your house? That's kind of tough because we're getting to a point where there's really not that much that can't be delivered. But I was going to say, like, for the ultimate laziness, because you can always get groceries delivered in most places. Canada doesn't really do that. Did anybody offer that in know. Canada? There's I know like in the, the States there's Amazon Amazon grocery and stuff, right? Like, they will send yeah. you groceries, which is incredible. Like, if you were a lonely America, shut-in with Amazon Grocery, you never need to leave yeah. the house. Uh, I'm going to say, like, Canada. drugstore. Drugstore? Yeah, which is a thing already, but you have to be on the approval of Because Shoppers Drug Mart will do home delivery for people that are elderly or, or not able to leave their house, like they're bedridden or whatever. Not they will do home delivery. Yeah. But, like, if we're going to cater to the to the gen, what are we, what are we gen Y? The general like, public, whatever, whatever shitty generation we are, millennials. If they're going to start catering your mill millennials, and and delivering literally everything to our house, so I never have to go outside and can live off the internet, like you know what? I've got a cold. 
Never mind prescription. I want like I'm at home. I'm icky. I have a cold. I don't want to leave. I'm gonna pull my cell phone up and call the drugstore or like the drugstore app and be like, I need a thing of Buckley's, and you know my internet wizardry makes it happen. That that's what I want deliverable. That's what I'm saying. For me, I don't know if I would want any one thing delivered. I think I would just want like a service and like all things deliverable. Well, this company just has a bunch of guys and you get assigned a guy. Okay. So that's my guy. You know what I mean? You, you call your guy up and you say, listen, I like, need So w- what you want is like, like a, a servant, but like delivery. I want a delivery ser- servant service. Yes. <laughs> all Actually, right. That would be even greater if they delivered delivered a servant to you there you and go they, and then you just sent him to do whatever you want um or her in some places that's also called slavery but uh you know it's fine <laughs> i call it um entrepreneurial ship i don't know something entrepreneurial i call it a an at-home helper at-home helper hey that's the name of the business at home helper.ca order yours there today you we'll deliver um, you a quote-unquote slave <laughs> that's, that's called slavery uh, that might be the episode title, to be honest. <laughs> That's too good. Honestly, like, we're getting to that point, though. Real talk. Real talk, we're getting to that point. It's and not going to be long before delivered. I can't go to Amazon, right? Like, yeah. I'm going to be able to go to Amazon, and I'm literally going to be able to order anything. I could, from, doesn't matter if it's a fucking cat, a pony, food, okay. drugs, new, whatever. New one, then. New one, then. If you're... Okay, screw cars. Cars are slow. If you could have it delivered by any means of transportation. Does it have to be real? Because my answer is going to be teleportation. <laughs> real, like a drone, Drew. A drone. drone. Yeah, no, no, the- drone delivery. Like, real talk, I'm excited for drone delivery. I mean, it's going to go horribly wrong, but I'm excited for drone oh, delivery. Yeah. See, that's the thing. We could have so many nice things if people weren't dicks. You know what I mean? Just... It's not incorrect. It's very correct. It's like, oh, was it Futurama or Family Guy when it was like, oh, this is a worse day. And then when the Irish discovered alcohol and they're like a bunch of scientists. Family Guy. In a, that was Family Guy. And, there's, and their city is like all. Oh, yeah. They're, they're like, look at the thing that Paddy O'Leary made with the water in his toilet. He calls it whiskey. And then like five minutes later, everything's on fire. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good time. Well, there we go. Let's uh, with a snub at the Irish, let's end the episode there. Oh, God. <laughs> from uh, from Aaron and myself, my friends. Uh, our message this week is: don't be lazy. Go out and get some shit. That's our message. And you know what? If Pokemon Go is the reason you're going outside, fuck it. Then, it's a reason. Do it. Hey, that's my summer exercise regimen, man. Is fucking Pokemon hunting. I'm not gonna lie. Like, I'm happy hey. the weather's nice. I mean, it wasn't nice today. It was fucking raining sideways, but that's fine. Uh, no, it, you know it's, I, I can dig it. I need to get back into that. Yeah, man. There's new Pokemon and stuff. So yeah, I oh. saw the gen two Pokemon. What is my, my only doing? complaint? Okay. Well, that was a massive technical snafu. Uh, my computer decided that it wanted to update right now, like, like right now and sorry, but you can't delay an update. So we're happening right now, uh, but we're back to finish off the last like literal minute of an episode. So uh, do you remember what we were talking about? We were talking about delivery service and then we were talking about, oh, don't be lazy. We we're talking about the message of the weekend. It was don't be a lazy piece don't of shit. Lazy. Go outside. And then we were talking about, yeah, thanks for the Windows alert there. Thanks for that. Um, oh, Pokemon Go. We're talking about Pokemon Go and getting back into Pokemon Go. There we go. Yes. That's where we're at in the episode. Go. Pokemon Go. I said I should start playing Pokemon Go again because they added... Uh, Gen 2. They added the new Pokemon. And my only thing against Pokemon Go is what I was going to say is you have like 20 of the same Pokemon. Yeah. Which I don't know how I feel about that. I'm going to install it. It's right definitely now. not. It's definitely not the same as playing on like a Game Boy, right? Like it's not that nostalgic feeling. No. But I feel like if Pokemon were real and you had to catch a lot of them to make things happen, then Pokemon Go is exactly what you would get. Yeah. I like um, it. It's not too bad. Super I definitely popular. wish you could. 
do things like if, I wish there was more battling things rather than the way the gyms work, right? Yeah, I definitely wish you could challenge other trainers and like the Pokemon you catch. Where if, if I wish it was closer to the actual game, like I can still run around and find Pokemon and all that kind of stuff, but I wish you could train them so that that Charmander I get, I don't like. You want to form that bond with you know, say your starter Pokemon, say so you pick Charmander or whatever the fuck it is, and you pick it, and you're like, I'm gonna yeah. form this bond, and now you're like, oh, you're 10 CP, bye, fucko, and you. Send him for candy because you can go find a better one, right? It's sort of well, it, you don't have the same Mario, emotional attachment. What about Mario uh, Run? How do you feel about Super Mario Run? Honestly, it does nothing for me. Yeah, it didn't feel, interest me at all. Yeah. It is it just, it just looked dumb. So yeah, uh, yeah, I don't know. Pokemon Go at your summer exercise excuse. That's what I say. Instant. Uh yeah, okay. Let's let's actually put a pin in this and. And call it a day. Um, so the message is, don't be lazy. Go outside. Do things. Unless it's raining, then fuck that. Stay inside. That, that's my message. Yeah. Aaron, you got anything? Yeah, don't be a lazy piece of shit. Do stuff. Go outside. Exactly. Go to <laughs> patreon.com slash TDPP. That's what you should do. That's if you're going to do anything today, go do that. And tell us you yeah, love yeah. us. Because we love you. Just go. Thank you so much. Hey. All right. Well, I, I right, think uh, from Drew... Drew and I. That's it. We Thanks for watching you again next week. Yeah, we'll do this. Hopefully with better technology than what we're doing right now. We tried. We love you guys and we tried. That's yeah. that, that's my final thought. We can <laughs> we're always you, trying. We can promise you every week that we will try for you. We will try our hardest. That that's it. That's that's the promise. That's we can say that uh, every week we will make an attempt. Might not be very good, but we'll make an attempt. And you so know, from, uh, yeah, there you go. From Marion and myself, love you guys. See you next time. Bye.